Hello and welcome to another video in my C Sharp Basics series. Now, as always, go ahead and follow me on GitHub, my website, and of course, email if you have any questions. So let's get started here. Now, in this chapter, now previous chapter, I gave you a very quick introduction about using the most common data types. But then again, we have been using all the common data types since the beginning of this series. So it's not something new or anything. Now, in this video, I want to talk about a very essential concept in programming because this is something we do a lot we have to do it okay because of the nature of input you know to give you an example most of the time okay when you start building full stack applications and i do have a plan to make a series of videos on uh, how to build a beginner level full stack development it is already planned the code is already there on github so i think i've already seen it the video is already there on the youtube channel where i talk about the demo project so i will be showing how to build it and we'll be doing a lot of casting and conversion but before that of course this series is about putting the foundation for that series of videos so we will be doing a lot of casting conversion why is that now when you take input from the user now, even the simplest of project okay you are collecting data as string because input is almost always a string okay but as we saw in the previous video data type can be a integer you know whole number it can be floating number you know fraction numbers it can be true or false boolean and stuff like that and of course, it can be all type of string and it can be custom types and also, you know, if we start using things like JSON and stuff like that. So you are always constantly casting and converting data types, both simple and custom types from one form to another. And for example, when we build a web API, we have something called models, you know, data models, which are related to the database um, tables. And then we also have DTOs, which are data transfer objects, which are meant to act as a bridge between your software and your data model. So again, you're constantly converting, you know, casting, you know, we also use the word mapping. We even use a library called mapper, auto mapper, which maps your information from your DTO to the model and model to DTO. So this is an essential topic. It may sound a little confusing, but of course, as always, once you start working on these things, it becomes second nature to you. And as I mentioned, you know, once you figure out how to use the system, the auto mapper library automatically does the conversion for you. And wherever you have to do it by hand, it also becomes second nature to you. So this is an essential concept. And there are some basic things that we use all the time. Let's get to it. So here, let's go ahead and open my fire up my visual studio. But first, maybe I should explain what casting is, you know, let me fire up my paint software. You know, I gotta say I like the paint software it's very very nice i do have that uh, what is that you know the wacom tablet you know for the drawing thing i have the apple pencil on my ipad as well but right now i don't have the uh, wacom it's in my storage uh so when i need it i'll, I'll get it out but right now i'm just going to use my mouse for all the drawing stuff so what is casting really so let's say you take an input from the user and I already mentioned that the input from the user is always in string. So when somebody types one on the input, it's actually one, which is a string. Right? Now in your code, let's say you have a variable called some number. Now let's say this is an int variable. Now you know already in programming, things are very specific. You cannot put a string into a integer variable it doesn't work that way you will get some kind of an exception or an error so what do we do here so what we do is we take our input <clears throat> which is one but it's actually a string one now you already know the number one and string one are two separate things they are not the same you can't just directly use them that way the number one the numerical one has a different you know i think there's something called ascii code or something you know, you can look it up that's beyond the scope of the discussion so in the, on the keyboard when you press one as a string and one as a, it's, it takes a different value so ask a value or different i think that's ask a value but some ultimately the point i'm trying to make is the string one and the number one are not the same so what we do is we take this and we convert or cast this into the number one so we convert the string one into the numerical one and then that is called casting right or converting but the better word is casting 
uh, and then obviously once it becomes a numerical one we can without any errors we can put it in sn which is expecting an integer value so we cannot put this direct putting will not work we must go through a casting process where we cast the string value into a number and then you can happily put it into a int variable and this applies to all types so there you go now of course the reverse is also true let me let me do the reverse here so let's say you have a string number okay this is a string type right and then you have numerical one so what you do is convert this cast into a string one mm -hmm. and then you put it into this type so just like last time if you try to directly put a number value in a string without casting now casting can be automatic can be ca casting can be uh, you know implicit which is automatic explicit where you write the code this do, but either, either way without casting this operation will give you an exception it will fail so you have to do the casting that is why this is so important because when you're dealing with data depending on what you're trying to do you are always gonna this is just simple types a lot of times i said you know when we work with databases we are continuously changing data from the database model to the dto which is data transfer object and then back and forth back and forth and a lot of times you have to cast from one custom type one class object to another class object so you'll write your own casting methods and stuff like that things can get very complex very fast when you when you start working with data types so so yes but but you know, as, as i always say you know ultimately programming is about knowing the basics and if you have that basic knowledge then doing the advanced things becomes second nature to you so learn the basic casting today and tomorrow you will be able to do complex casting right don't forget that focus on the basics and then keep working on it keep building on it right so let's get to it so i want to do let's go ahead and create a new project console app this is going to be about cast okay there we go all right so i have my notes here i want to i want to i really want to follow the script here. i want to make sure i cover all the essentials here the first thing i want to do is i want to take a string and i want to try and convert that into a integer now there are many ways of doing it so let's say i have an integer here so int some number is equal to 10 now if i try to say string some number as string if i say this i am sure i will get an error do you see that it says cannot implicitly convert int to string which means i have 10 here which is a number and i have which is an integer type and i have another type string type i can't just directly do this now there are many ways i can convert it let's try that now this is going to be an error so what i will do is i'll just call this a and here i can try something like this no that also doesn't work i can't do that way also let me try another way can i do dot uh, yeah, i was trying to oh, there it is i have something called two string and there you go so there is a method called two string and i'm able to convert that number 10 into a string 10 so let's give it a try so i'm going to say console dot write line some number and then i am going to say console dot write line and there you go so now if i run this i'll see that in both cases the output is the same see this is where i have seen some students get a little confused but as i mentioned before input and output most of the time i would say 99.99 percent .99 of the time at least in the project that i have worked on is always some kind of string 
okay so even when you show a number 10 when it starts showing it it actually becomes a string right so there you go that's why they look similar but you must understand that is actually a string anyway okay so there you go now another way of doing this is you can do something like this you can do let me try three see if that works string some number as string now as always in programming there is more than one way to achieve the same results so here i could do something like this i have an empty string and then i'm going to say 10. see that worked so what i did was i used an empty string and then i used the plus operator which you know you will understand the plus operator is a mathematical operator for adding two numbers but when you use the plus operator with a string it becomes a string concatenation operator right so it automatically converts you know implicit casting so it implicitly converts the number 10 into a string 10 which is why i'm not getting any error like, like, like if i try to do it directly I will get an error but if I try to use the plus symbol I don't get an error so now what happens if I try to use the variable so again the same situation I don't get any error because the plus operator the string concatenation operator is automatically doing implicit casting of this specific data type now if I remove this plus and empty string I do get an error because the equal operator does not do implicit casting however if i put the plus operator it does do implicit casting so now if i go here and if i say console dot right line and i put this some string as string b hello hello voila right very very straightforward okay now what about converting a string into an inch integer something that we do a lot so let's give it a try so i am going to say string another number is equal to you know doing the reverse here right so I'm, again i'm checking my notes to make sure i'm doing it correctly right so I, I don't want this is a very important topic i don't want to mess up i would rather be safe than sorry so now here i want to say int another number underscore as int underscore a now if i try to do it directly it's not going to work not going to work but i can try let me see if there's a dot anything to no 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 there's no nothing like dot to int but i know there is another way so i can do something like this i can do convert dot two there it is so ah look at that now when you are trying to convert a number to a string the method looks something like this but when you have a string that you're trying to map it into a integer you want to use a separate class and a method called convert dot two int 32 another number now let's see if that works so once again i am going to say console dot right line i want two outputs here the first one is going to be another number and the second one is going to be another number as int underscore a and when i run this i will still see the same 10 10 10 10 10 although we know in the code that the first 10 is an integer whereas the second and third are strings again here the first one is a string and the second was an integer but obviously when you put something as output it becomes a string anyway okay and and this works for a lot of scenarios as well so this is the main thing you know this is this is the usual type of casting that you do in your projects uh, other than dto and model mapping that we'll worry about later and let me see if there's anything else i need to talk about um let's see oh yeah there's another way of doing it like uh between integers and decimals so that's something we need to try so let me go ahead and say decimal some decimal is equal to 10.69 now if i have a integer i think i have to put a d or is it f i have to put some letter for decimal or oh, m oh uh, yeah 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 i don't know why it's not 10.69 d that will be more logical but i'm not a computer scientist i don't know i'm not some 
you know, in-depth professor. I'm sure there are reasons for it, historical reasons or something. So for decimal, we have to put M. Uh, so we do that. Now let's create an integer. So I'm going to say some decimal as int is equal to some decimal this will give us an error because a decimal value is not an integer value and an integer value is not a decimal value although there may be some automatic conversion happening so what i could do here is i could do this way of this is one way of doing it uh, okay so i can say there you go so what this will do is it'll take the decimal number and then cast it to an integer Right. I wonder if the convert dot to in 32 also works. Let's give it a try. So I'm going to say in decimal underscore B. Now this one, let's call it A. B is equal to convert dot to int 32 some decimal. I don't know if it works. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that works too. So there you go. Convert dot to int 32. Now what about the reverse then? What if you have an integer and you want to convert that to decimal? Right, so let's give it a try. So I'm going to say int another number part two is equal to 10. Now I want to convert that to decimal. So I'm going to say decimal another number part two um, as decimal is equal to I can do decimal and then I wonder if there's a convert dot to decimal function. Let's let's try that. Hold on. Uh, let's call this a yeah the variable names are becoming really long here but it's okay I don't mind I'm a big fan of long variable names I like it so underscore B okay here we go and I want to say let's see I want to try if that is a convert dot to decimal yeah there is a convert dot to decimal and I am going to say another number part two and here also obviously we're trying to convert another part two to decimal uh, okay good good uh, no errors so far so that seems to be okay so there you go we are converting integer to decimal decimal to integer another common operation just like we convert from integer to string and string to another whatever operation we did for strings will work for decimal as well so i think we are good there so let's give it a try here so let me put a console dot right line so how many there lines we have i have here one two three four five six okay six of them let's do it you know i will tell you this much though so doing all this console dot right line does seem cumbersome i'm not gonna deny that but you know what learning you know you can't t t start talking about stuff like oh this is cumbersome that is cumbersome i mean that is life isn't it can't keep complaining forever at some point you gotta just Go quiet and do it. So let's see it. So there we go. Once again, let's run this. Ah, there you go. 10.69, 10, 11, 10, 10, 10. Boom, boom, boom. Everything is looking really, really good. And that's the story. That's the main thing. Let me see if there's anything else important that I have forgotten in this one. So string conversion, integer. Oh, there is the parse method. I forgot about that. So let's say you have a string. Now you can do convert dot do in two, but you can also do another way. So let's do this. So I'm going to say int another number as int underscore b is equal to, what is it called? Int dot parse. parse another number boom okay let's look at this output another console dot right line again the variable names keep getting longer it's fine it's not the end of the world and there you go it works so as you can see there are different different ways of converting from one type to another the most common scenarios are the ones i just showed you you know integer to string string to integer integer to decimal decimal to integer um and you know that's that's the main stuff so there you go but again this is a very basic concept and you will keep uh seeing this you'll keep using this and we'll be using a lot of this in my uh, upcoming uh, web api video tutorial series as well but as always you know my, my my thinking is there is a lot more to this you know there's a lot more stuff you have to do when you're doing casting operation thing but again you know we are i am focused mainly on the basics here and i am making sure uh you know i teach everything you will be needing for my 
you know the next series of videos so but there's a lot more guys as always you want to go deeper into it you have microsoft learn website you have um microsoft docs and thousands and unlimited number of tutorials you know blogs and videos on youtube so so you know there's nothing stopping you from going there but for me i want to showcase the things that you will need in the um next video set right so that's what it is so that's all there is to it about conversion for now and i will see you uh, in the next one